amazing how generation after generation just lived in the same place over the years. I think it must have been lovely to grow up in a village where pretty much everyone knew everyone. So all the families sort of, I suppose when you used to say your surname, then people would say, oh, I know who you are, you know, what sort of group you're from, what sort of clan you're from. Um, so hearing the, um, the folks chat today, you know, they knew a lot of, you know, a lot of the local families and they were all sort of, you know, a lot of them were related, you know, looking at the old black and white photos, they can point out who owns different houses and stuff and recognise where they've lived, which is, you know, lovely to hear. And it's amazing to hear that, you know, the stories of what Braunton used to be like, because it's changed so much over the years. I mean, losing a train station and, and then gaining a new road, you know, things like that, and, and hearing the changes of the great field. Because we used to live on the great field, didn't we? Mm -hmm. On the close on the great field, and we've seen it. And I just presumed it's always been sort of vegetable sort of strip farming. But to hear it used to be covered in beautiful tulips. It was fascinating to hear about how it's changed over the years, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, I was born here. My mother and father were born here, and my grandparents were were all Brontonians from. Well, I think they arrived from Mort about a hundred years ago. What you call the toll house now, as you go off the main road to go down through Bellator. Um, it's, it, it was bank house in those days, and mother was born there. And my grandfather, he used to, he had that place, house rent free. He had a pair of waders and a long handled shovel, and he used to clean the dikes all the way out through by hand. And he still managed to work two or three days a week on a farm. <laughs> Oh, so Uncle Reg. Yeah. Oh, Reg Williams. He he was um he was a more well, merchant seaman. I suppose he was on the coasters all his life. Yeah, that man could tie any knot that you could think of. If I wanted something at the end of me, one of the ropes on the boat, I'd go down and say, Uncle Reg, do me a so and so and so and so, and he he get what do you call him a morning speed. He's got a little thing with a like a metal with a point on it. And he'd sort of fiddle around like this, and he'd go, there you are. And in about two minutes, he'd done this knot. For six months I worked in the office at the boat farm. Dear old lady called, I forget what her name was, she was about that wide, but she knew her job. I can remember her, but I can't remember her name. She used to boss me about, no end, but I mean I was only a 16 year old kid then anyhow. Mainly daffodils, yeah, tulips. But they used to sell bulbs to the Dutch, <laughs> believe it or not. You know, the chips that you get off the side of a bulb, they didn't want them, so they used to pull the chips off and just throw them and some of them landed in the hedges and grew. Yeah, but yeah. But, uh, yeah. Some of those daffodils are very old strains, which makes it rather nice. Mm. Well, I go past there and, and I see a bulb and I think, well, you couldn't buy that one now. You don't really expect there to be loads and loads and loads of flowers and like on that one farm and, that, and you'd never realise that. and. Now that you do, you're like, oh, that's changed a lot. It's like looking at the pictures, there's a real sense of community amongst people. I don't know whether that was true, but it looks like it's lots and lots of people working on the fields, whereas now when you see people working on the fields, it's sort of two or three people and a big tractor, and there's just not as many people there, and that maybe lent a great sense of community and family that... Um, we maybe don't quite have nowadays.